Reverend William Augustus Muhlenberg was an Episcopal priest uh, at the Church of the Holy Communion in Manhattan. And he had very progressive ideas. He wanted to help the needy, the orphan, the crippled, and wanted to get uh, kids, needy kids, out of the uh, city slums. And that's how it got started. Early community was really named St. John's. A rural farming community. We had a couple of houses, number of farms, and a lot of wood separating them. There was nothing going on here. It was a, something you went through. It's not something you stayed at. There was basically one road running through town, and that was what we know today as St. Johnlin Road, and uh, that connected Smithtown to Huntington. In fact, on many of the old maps, it listed as the road to Huntington one way and the road to Smithtown in another direction. It doesn't have the name at all on it. And it's always a great uh, discussion as to where the name Kings Park came from. The name really came from, uh, from a, a little park in Jamaica called King Park. And it was actually the railroad people who uh, named the station Kings Park. Kings Park has 20,000 residents today. The railroad made the world of difference, and ever since that came to town, Kings Park has been growing by leaps and bounds. What we know as Kings Park today brought up many of the goods and services from Connecticut because we're right across the water. And the Nessaquag River, before the railroad station came out here, was a main way, main traffic for getting the goods into Smithtown. At the turn of the century, the conditions in New York City were very tough. They were overcrowded, there was rampant disease, uh, it was lawless, and uh, the city had grown. And so many of these organizations which were originally set up in New York City couldn't function there anymore. They wanted to get out of the city. And Kings Park was that place, especially after the Reverend set up St. John Lynn Home for Children. Dr. Muhlenberg's dream was that uh, the setup of community where particularly inner city people could receive training in a farm community setting and then they, they could take those skills back to the city. As far away as Switzerland, they were watching some of the things that, uh, that Muhlenberg was doing at St. John. It was set up basically as a training school, you know, uh, what they call a stereotype foundry, printing press, making umbrellas, making hats, and a little bit of farming. And uh, for the girls, it was uh, more of a domestic thing, uh, sewing, knitting, cooking, that kind of thing. And it was a very interesting early concept of the kinds of uh, help that poor inner city people needed. Well, all, you know, his uh, dream was a utopian community, paradise, Shangri-La, oasis. And that's what St. John was back in the 40s when I first arrived there, 10 years old. You know, we were kind of poor, you know, because, uh, I mean, when I was there, I mean, there were no full-fledged orphans. They were generally half orphans. My father had died. So we really had no money. We had one big playground, 400 acres, of woods and farm and beach. What I especially loved about being at St. John Lund, and I still think of it to this day, is uh, the communal effect. In other words, of one big house, they had anywhere from 24 to 30 boys and two big dorms upstairs. So there was never a sad moment. Everyone according to their needs. It was very important to the Reverend to be able to take care of the children who were most in need. Back then, they didn't have the same social services provided by the government, and so the religious institutions and motivated individuals would provide those services, and the Reverend was one of those. <laughs> 